Good Thank afternoon, you. Mr. Chairman, Congressman Herger, and members of the subcommittee. I'm Christine Bechtel, and I'm the Vice President of the National Partnership for Women and Families, which is a nonprofit consumer organization. I'm also a consumer representative on the Health IT Policy Committee. I'm honored to be with you today to discuss the ways that the meaningful use of information technology will benefit patients and families. Now, that said, our discussion today shouldn't actually be about technology. It should be about the ways in which changes in healthcare payment and delivery can create the kind of truly patient-centered system that we all envision and that every consumer deserves. That means designing systems around what patients say they want and need to improve their own health outcomes. And what patients want is simple and straightforward. They want their doctors to talk to each other. They want information about their conditions. They want providers who know them enough to make treatment recommendations that make sense for them. And they want their care team to have the information and support they need to do the best job that they can. Technology plays a critical role in delivering this kind of patient-centered care. It simply cannot be done right, done well, or done consistently without interconnected health IT. The regulations issued last week lay the groundwork for doing just that. I'd like to highlight some of the ways that meaningful use will result in tangible improvements for patients and families by sharing the story of Susan Croson, who is a family caregiver from Maryland. Susan looks after her father, Pop, and Pop has Alzheimer's disease, heart arrhythmia, prostate problems, low blood platelets, and is susceptible to other infections. He sees a primary care physician, a cardiologist, a urologist, a hematologist, and a neurologist. Each monitors and treats a separate condition, and yet they don't talk to each other. So Susan had to build a spreadsheet to keep track of it all. She leaves copies with each doctor and asks that Pop's records be sent to his primary care physician and other specialists, but it's rarely done. When she takes her dad for lab tests, she's the one who makes sure that each doctor gets the results or just doesn't happen. Pop takes three prescription drugs, two over-the-counter drugs and vitamins, as well as occasional, occasional antibiotics. These drugs are prescribed by different doctors. When Pop's doctors prescribe a drug, they tell Susan to check with his other doctors about potential drug interactions. Susan's situation is common. Millions of patients struggle to gather and update hundreds of pages of medical records if they can get them at all, toting them from doctor to doctor, knowing that no provider is likely to have their full medical histories or test results. Mr. Chairman, I'm confident that we can help Susan and other patients and families to get better care by leveraging the requirements that are now part of the Meaningful Use Program. The new regulations are strong, sensible, and patient-centered. If the members of POP's care team were meaningful users of electronic health records today, they would maintain an up-to-date list of his conditions and medications. They would check those lists for drug-drug interactions and allergies. They would provide Susan with education resources, summaries of care after each office visit, reminders about follow-up care, and more. And POP's care team would also begin to develop the ability to communicate with each other electronically. Stage one of meaningful use also builds the foundation for overall improvements in the quality, safety, and efficiency of care. For example, it requires the collection of data on race, ethnicity, preferred language, and gender so that we can identify and target health disparities. It asks physician meaningful users, regardless of specialty, to focus on hypertension, smoking, and obesity so that we can better address the public health challenges that are driving the increase in chronic conditions and causing costs to skyrocket and it advances an important set of criteria for protecting the privacy and security of health information. But our work on meaningful use of health IT is not done. Stage two should enable the robust, secure exchange of clinical information across all the providers and settings involved in the patient's care in compliance with federal and state privacy laws. Patients and families should have timely, ongoing access to their health information in a way that is portable so that they can assemble it in a secure place of their choosing. Quality measures should assess outcomes, functional status, and patient and caregiver experiences. Put simply, future criteria should be driven by the goal of high-quality, patient-centered care. It's what Susan deserves and what all patients deserve. After all, healthcare transformation is not about money and it's not about technology. It's about people and leadership, and we thank you for yours.